Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Paranjoy Goha Thakurta. Joining me from Aizol in Mizoram, I'm very happy to have Kimi Kolni. She's a journalist and currently she's reporting for the East Mojo website. Earlier she had reported for the Caravan magazine. Thank you, Kimi, for giving us your time. The first question I would like to ask you, and this is for the benefit of our viewers. There seem to be several political parties and groups in the election frame. Now, elections were already held on the 7th of November. We have to wait for the 3rd of December for the results. The main political party that seems to be the leader of the race is the Mizo National Front, led by Chief Minister Zoram Thanga. And he's been the Chief Minister of Mizoram now for about 22 years. There's only one other person who's been the Chief Minister of Mizoram for a similar period, and that's Lal Thaan Ola. At some point of time, I'm going to ask you to compare the two. But the MNF are con contesting in all the 40 assembly seats. So is the Indian National Congress. They are led by Lal Sola. The Zoram People's Movement is also contesting all the 40 seats. It's led by Lal Duhonma. Du yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, Bhar the Bharti Janta Party, led by Varla Muakha, is contesting 23 seats. And there's the Aam Admi Party, led by Andrew Lal, Lal Remkina, who is contesting just four mm -hmm. seats. So, Kimi, first tell us who are the major contenders, who were the major contenders in the electoral battle? The major contenders were MNF and ZPM. Uh, Congress also has still has some say, but uh, the impact of Congress is not as big as it was before. And um, see, what we have to understand is uh, for 30 years, the people have only seen the leadership of two chief ministers, Zoram Tanga and Lal Tan Hola. And uh, the the mood of the people is that they want to see something different. They want to see a new leadership, especially the youth uh, who are like uh, becoming more interested in politics, politics for change. They want to see a new leadership, a new party come into force. And uh, so I think now the main battle is between MNF and ZPM. Uh, MNF still has strong supporters from its party, uh, the people who have been faithful to the party for all these years. Uh, but ZPM has come in really strong. So um, once the results are out, we will see uh, who, who gets the majority. Okay. Now, you believe that the main contest is really, if you look at personalities, is by Lal Duhanma uh, for the post of the Chief Minister and Zoram Thangai. Am I correct? Yes. All right. Can we talk a little bit about the issues that are likely or were likely to have influenced the choices of the voters of Mizoram? You already said people want a change. Now, what kind of a change? Let me quickly run through some of the points made in the manifestos of the different political parties. The MNF have talked about the unification of the Zo people of the world in tune or in line with the resolution in the United Nations, the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. It's talked about the implementation of all the clauses of the 1986 peace accord, which was signed by Rajiv Gandhi. And at that point of time, it was Lal Denga. Though the process had been started earlier under Indira Gandhi and under the civil servant, R.D. Pradhan. Then we'll also have talk about the border issue in detail, but the MNF has talked about that. Others, other political parties are also promising several things to the people. The Congress is talking about 
the old age pension scheme, cheap gas cylinders, cooking gas cylinders, sustainable agriculture to take agriculture away from the slash and burn or the chum cultivation, talking about health insurance covers, startups for entrepreneurs. The Bharatiya Janta Party, the BJP, is wanting to spend more on education, on a medical college. They want to empower women, give 1.5 lakh rupees to every girl child. Talks about the sports, sports academy. Talks about, you know, um, encouraging uh, sports and, and, and in, in Manipur. And, and so we have a, a lot of claims that are being made and a lot of, uh, talk, I mean, even the BJP says we have to solve the border dispute with Assam. We'll come to the border question a little later. But what makes you think that the Zoram People's Movement, the ZPM led by Lal Do Hon Ma, will attract voters? What is there so in their manifesto, in their promises? So the parties, I think like every other state, have make a lot of promises in their manifestos, which are hardly ever fulfilled or partially fulfilled. And the people of Mizoram have seen how uh, MNF and Congress have partially fulfilled or failed to fulfill their manifestos. Now, uh, the, the eye of the people is on ZPM because we don't know yet whether they will be good or they will be bad, like if they will be able to fulfill what they say. Uh, we cannot, uh, we don't have an experience with them yet. So it's like a risk, but it seems like a good risk. That's what uh, the people, especially the youth talk about. They just want a change. And once, if ZPM comes into power, then they will see how, how they perform. And based on that, in the next elections, the outcome uh, the outcome will be seen. But it's not that ZPM is very uh, good or it has a good history to show. It's just that people just want to taste something different and see whether it will be good or not. Uh, so they also have good candidates, but oh, each each party has some good candidates, some not so good candidates. So I don't think it's a uh, the candidates would have a major say, but uh, especially the youth, they just want something different. Okay. But it's not just the youth who will determine the outcome of the election. So we don't know if what the youth want will actually come into power, because especially in the rural areas, in the villages, uh, the communities uh, have like. The, the parties, the loyalty to parties is passed down from generations to generations. So people might still vote for the parties which they feel like is home to them. So um, it's hard to say, but right. uh, what the youth think right now is that they just want change. Okay. And what you had asked earlier regarding like, um, what, what what is like in the minds of the people, uh, when all uh, we, there were many press conferences held uh, just before the elections every day all the parties would hold press conferences and one thing that each party would always talk about is uh this alliance with bjp so they always accuse each other of trying to have an alliance with bjp zpm would say mnf is aligned with uh, bjp under neda and like you should not choose them see how what is happening in manipur and they've still not been able to leave neda and then congress would say zpm is trying to uh, align with bjp after the elections were over so i think this was a major factor the the accusation that there are some talks of aligning with BJP or that they are already aligned with BJP. That's one thing. And okay. I think another thing that um, the people are concerned about is healthcare. Uh, the Mizoram, the healthcare system that we currently have has failed miserably. And I think this is something that people will be looking forward to, to see uh, which manifesto has promised good healthcare and uh, good healthcare system and uh, what would actually be practical. So I think the healthcare is also a major issue. Drugs right. was also a major issue that was spoken about. Yes. All right. Let me ask you to talk in some greater detail on some of the points that you have already mentioned. The first is we look at the Mizo National Front, the MNF, that it is at one level a part of NEDA, the Northeast Democratic Alliance, 
it is an ally of the Bharati Janata Party led National Democratic Alliance in India. Yet, yet, Chief Minister Zoram Thanga said, I don't want to share a platform with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And better if he comes alone. This is his words that he has been quoted as saying. What made Chief Minister Zoram Thanga make these points? Has it got something to do with the fact that Mr. Narendra Modi as, is seen as the champion of Hindutva, whereas 87% of more than 1 million people who live in Mizoram are Christian. It also has the highest concentration of scheduled caste, the forest, forest cover, but that's another story. Interestingly, interestingly, Mr. Narendra Modi has not did not campaign in Mizoram. Over the last nine and a half years, Mr. Modi has campaigned in every state, including Mizoram, five years ago. So Mr. Modi has not campaigned. And the chief minister says, I don't want to share the same platform with the prime minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi. How do you how do you analyze? the these statements and these developments yes so yes in mizoram um bjp is seen as a pro hindutva party but zoram tanga has never actually spoken against or for bjp based on religious grounds uh, when he said he would not share a platform with Narendra Modi, it was because of what is happening in Manipur, uh, that the prime minister has not visited Manipur till today. And uh, he was silent for a very long time. Uh, he ultimately spoke up, but just for a few seconds about the Manipur issue. And I, that was the main reason that he said he would not share platform with uh, Narendra Modi. And... Um, so the people were all looking towards his visit to Mizoram, but I think uh, just when the word of his visit came out, uh, there was uh, a lot of um, images and a lot of words shared on Instagram and Twitter that he can visit Mizoram, so why not Manipur? And uh, we don't know, uh, I don't know what was in the, uh, our prime minister's mind, but what the Congress has accused him of is that uh, he's afraid to come to Mizoram because he knows that the people will, will question why Mizoram and why not Manipur. So it remains a question, but that is what uh, some of the people think that uh, he, uh, why he cancelled his visit to Mizoram. Okay. You know, uh, Chief Minister Zoram Thanga has also chosen to ignore the directive from Delhi, from the Ministry of Home Affairs, led by Mr. Amit Shah, that the refugees who have come in from Myanmar, they need to be identified mm -hmm. biometrically, the iris of the eye, thumbprint, and so on and so forth. Once again, the Chief Minister has completely ignored this direction that has come from Delhi. Yes. So, um, what people uh, need to understand about Mizoram is that we are a very tight-knit community. Uh, if we share ethnic ties with someone, uh, we, sh we uh, have very strong bonds with them. Like we will stand for them and we will defend them. We will be there for them no matter what. And I think what Zoram Tanga has done would have been done by any other party if they were in power in Mizoram, whether it was Congress, the PM, BJP, any party, if they had a Mizo leader, I think they would make the same decision because uh, the refugees who have fled from Myanmar, the displaced persons from Manipur, all share ethnic ties with the people of Mizoram. So, uh, as he said, it's like uh, doing it's like doing that to the, your own brothers and sisters from your own family. And uh, he said he could not do it. And I think the people of Mizoram also stands by him and applaud him for that decision. Okay, Kimi, let's talk a little bit about the impact of what has happened in Manipur from the 3rd of May. So it's May, June, July, August, September, October. It's more than six months, six and a half months. Mizor, I mean, it hasn't had it. What, the fact that Manipur is burning, that there is a, a, an internal war, a civil war that is going on there has affected 
Mizoram. At one level, refugees, both from the Meitei community as well as the Kukizo community, have come to Mizoram. They've gone there for medical treatment. They, fi they find themselves safer in Mizoram. At the same time, surely a, Christ a, a state with 87% uh, Christian majority must be very unhappy that large numbers of churches have been burned. I want you to explain to the viewers of NewsClick what has been the impact of the violence and the troubled, a very, very troubled situation currently, which continues to prevail in Manipur. What impact has it had and will it have on the way people have voted, the way people have voted on the 7th of November? How, how is it going to impact the politics of your state, which is Mizoram? So, um, for as long as we have known, uh, people have seen BJP as a pro-Hindu, pro-Hindutva party. But what has happened in Manipur has doubled it. It, it, it has worsened how people view the BJP party. Uh, I've done a story uh, on the impact of Manipur on the Mizoram elections and everyone I'd interviewed from someone as old as 80 years old to some youth and teenagers, everyone said that uh, they how they see BJP has become worse after uh, seeing and hearing what is happening in Manipur, especially because of the silence of our prime minister and how the violence is going on. Uh, even though they could do something, no one is doing anything, they feel that way. And they just feel like uh, everything is the fault of the BJP party. Uh, and they the outlook towards the BJP party has gone even worse after seeing the ethnic clashes that is happening in Manipur. Um, so I think that is the mood of most of the people. But uh, the BJP, on the other hand, have said that they have been, uh, Mr. Kiran Rijiju, when he visited Mizoram, he said they have been only trying to provide solutions. They did not cause the ethnic clashes. So, um, but we cannot help how people see the situation. So that is how they see the situation. Okay. Kimi, you know, it's not just uh, what has happened in Manipur. We all know that there are porous borders and it's not just the fact that uh, Mizoram shares uh, a border with Tripura and Assam. It shares a border with Myanmar. And mm -hmm. as an aside, you know, the name itself, Mizo, which is an endonym for native people, and Ram, which has nothing to do with the Hindu lord Ram, but the land of that. Mm -hmm. You see, the refugees which have come from both Bangladesh and have come from Myanmar. And many of them are running away from the military regime of Myanmar. There are the Rohingya who have found refuge. And Mizoram is seen to be a place where people can be relatively safe, where they are running away from uh, those who are oppressing them where they live. Now, what kind? I mean, uh, one estimate that I have, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that are at present around 40,000 people from Myanmar and Bangladesh and Manipur who are currently in Mizoram. I want you to explain to me what kind of impact this has had on politics in your state. So, um, the refugees uh, do not really have, especially what is happening in Myanmar, do not have a major impact on the politics in our state, but it has a major impact on the financial situation in our state because our state is uh, very poor. Uh, we are like, uh, our economy is not good. And on top of that, it's hardly being able to provide for its government employees. On top of that, providing for over 40,000 people is very difficult. And the Mizoram government has constant, consistently appealed to the central government for some sort of aid. The central government has remained silent, even for the people of its own state, for the people of Manipur, the displaced persons who came from Manipur, uh, when the 
uh, Mizram government asked for aid, the central government said they would send aid in kind. And the, the state government was surprised that they would do that because it, it, it's really difficult. Like uh, some volunteers are looking after the refugees and they're hardly able to provide for their families. They are looking after refugee camps that are bigger than their own villages. So this is just done out of purely voluntary basis, purely because of ethnic ties and the Christian, uh, the Christian uh, spirit that they have. But we don't know for how much longer this can go on. The central government needs to have a proper uh, refugee law, a proper refugee policy in place, and they need to help out these people who are actually like uh, running away who are actually in trouble who are actually fleeing for their lives so um that that is the impact that it's had on our state one question when we go back in time the 1986 the peace accord which was signed by rajiv gandhi and lal Dinga, if you recall the this happened just before just a little before Mizoram became a state. This is the 7th of August, 1986, the 23rd state of the Indian Union. Uh, it's a landlocked state. But you know, when even today that accord, people remember because the MNF surrendered the arms. Today we have seen large scale looting of arms in Manipur. We, we hear Horrible stories of what you can call narco terrorism because of the porous borders. Now, here I want to ask you a question as to how you see Mizoram being different, not just from Manipur, from the other states of Northeast, and to what extent do issues like this, narco terrorism, uh, aid to the refugees, and the, the, the fact that you have here a state which has a history of peaceful or relatively peaceful resolution of situations of armed conflict, how is it affecting your state today? And how has it affected or would have affected voter, voter preferences and voter choices on the 7th of November when they voted? So yes, uh, Mizoram is a very peaceful state, and um, I think it has had one of the most successful peace accords known, uh, I, maybe in India or the rest of the world, I'm not sure. So um, it's because the people of Mizoram are very obedient. Uh, if you come here, uh, we we have a lot of flaws, but we are famous for obeying our traffic rules. Uh, it, some, it has often gone viral how people are very obedient to traffic rules. Uh, so I think that like um, the spirit of the people, we have a lot of uh, selflessness, a lot of obedience that has helped uh, ensuring that there are no more outbreaks of violence or terrorism to continue now, even after uh, the state has been over 35 years now. And what is happening in Manipur, the narco terrorism, it's very, it's very bad. It's, uh, it's a very pitiful situation. <laughs> and but it does not have a direct impact on Mizoram right now. Uh, we do have a lot of drug smuggling because um, we have a border, um, Indo-Myanmar border, uh, the route that goes through Jampai. So a lot of drug is smuggled through Mizoram. So we also have a lot of drug users and the drugs are smuggled through to other states too, uh, very sadly. Uh, so that is a problem that we have, but we don't actually have a problem of narco-terrorism, but we do have a big problem with drugs, drug use and the drug routes which are going through our state. And a, high, a very, very high number of drug users, which was also a very big uh, topic in the elections. Uh, uh, a lot of the politicians were talking about how the government has failed to curb um, the drug problem that is happening in our state and how they are uh, turning a blind eye towards the drug smugglers. So the parties have promised that uh, this would be resolved, but uh, let's see if that happens. Okay. Thank you so much, Kimi Kolni, for speaking to us, for speaking to me, for through me, the viewers of this program, uh, to all the all the viewers of NewsClick, and we'll have to wait for the third of December, and then we'll be able to figure out whether Zoram Thanga will actually end up becoming the longest-serving chief minister of Mizoram.
or whether there will be a regime change and the Zoram People's mm -hmm. Movement led by Lal Duhon Ma mm -hmm. would replace Zoram Thanga and what would be the role of the Congress Party in the political situation. Thank you once again for being with us and mm -hmm. we'll have to wait and watch. And to all the viewers of NewsClick, please keep watching NewsClick, subscribe to the channel, click on the button. Thank you once again.